Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokus Mystery, Part 2, 96. We're continuing with our lesson title, The Seed of the Serpent. This will be Part 2. Scripture indicates <coughs> the seed of the serpent are ancient Luciferian spirits called the nations, mm. which Lucifer dominated in the time that he dominated the secondary creation. We have a picture of that in Ezekiel 31, verse 6. We give the introduction just as we're turning. Mm -hmm. Give us an example of what these various nation creatures look like. <laughs> The spectrum across the board. Yeah. God is a prolific creator. He does not ma ma major in duplication and repetition. <laughs> he likes variation. At the same time, Mr. Jones, I would think <coughs> that he wouldn't build atrocious creations that would be startling to look at. I would think knowing his creation that he's created and what what was starling what is pleasant to the sight he would do exactly what he would to promote our understanding of himself and to not scare us well <clears throat> that creates for himself and what he creates is always beautiful always perfect what happens though is the creation itself distorts mm -hmm. converts and, and corrupts, corrupts yes so what once started off as beautiful mm. uh, might well end up as uh, being abhorrent. But it's not God that did it. Right. It's a creature. Ezekiel 31, verse 6. <clears throat> All the fowls of heaven made their nests in his boughs. Under his branches did all the beasts of the field bring forth their young. And in his shadow dwelt all great nations. <coughs> the word nation comes from a Hebrew term goi, which can mean an individual, it can mean people, uh, it can mean mass, depending upon the context of, context of the scripture. This brings us to the next principle. Scripture indicates the fall of Adamic man opened the way for these spirits to incarnate into the human race. Genesis 3, verse 16. <clears throat> Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow. In other words, sorrow comes from a Hebrew term, Isabon, which means hardship. And thy conception. The word conception comes from a Hebrew term, <coughs> Haraya, which means childbearing. In sorrow, that word comes from the Hebrew term which means labor. In sorrow shalt thou bring forth children and thy desire shall be to thy husband and he shall rule over thee. So we find a direct connection between <coughs> the fall <coughs> and a great change in childbearing on the part of uh, Adamic women. So we should understand that spirits which are part of the nations are able because of the call to incarnate into the human race yes mm -hmm. now we see a, a very interesting example of this scripture teaches <coughs> this is partially due to non-human spirit intelligences mixed with Adamic souls entering the human race Genesis 25 Verse 20 to 23.
And Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah to wife, the daughter of Bethuel, the Syrian, of Padadaram, the sister of Laban, the Syrian. <clears throat> and Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. And the children struggled together within her. And she said, If it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. So this poor woman was having tremendous affliction. Labor pains? No, she didn't go into labor yet. It was just the, the, the development <clears throat> caused her tremendous agony because of situations that were taking place within her that she couldn't comprehend. She didn't understand what was going on. What were these situations taking place in? It's the next passage of scripture. <clears throat> Verse 23, And the Lord said unto her, Two nations okay. are in thy womb. The word nations here is two people. Right. Two nations are in thy womb, and two men or people shall be separated from thy bowels. The one people shall be stronger than the other, and the elder shall serve the younger. <clears throat> so basically what you had was um, an Adamic <clears throat> and a tear mm. that were within, her, within her womb, which was causing tremendous agony. Now this isn't the case all the time, but what it's talking about <clears throat> is, <clears throat> he says, I will, I will bring... I'll add to your sorrow. He's talking to Eve. He says, In sorrow shall you bring forth, or in labor shall you bring forth <coughs> children. Well, the first child born to Eve was Cain, who was a tear, and uh, <coughs> made their lives miserable from the time he made his entrance to the time that he left. We see an example here of uh, Esau, same situation. Should we understand that these two twins were fighting in the womb from inception? Yes. Mm. Yes. Well, let's go on. Mr. Jones. <clears throat> yes. Why was there two nations in her womb? Because she transgressed? Because man fell. He opened the door to Luciferian spirits entering into the human race. Just like he opened the door to all other spirits <clears throat> entering into the human race. The human race is plagued on many levels by this stuff. Demons came in to man's reality. Principalities came into man's reality because man fell and opened the door to all that influence. So the Rebecca, did she conceive in the, in the normal manner of conception or did, did the Lord plan it in there? She conceived normally. Normally? Yeah. And then, uh, so Isaac put the, those, those, those two different twins in there. Uh, well, Isaac just did the normal situation. What happened in the spiritual realm okay. was that Lucifer had access to the human race through the woman, <clears throat> which is what we read in Genesis 3, chapter 15, 16. Yeah. Okay, so literally that was my, the, the question I was going to ask. Who determines which, which spirit is going to come through the womb? And you just now said it was Lucifer. Yeah. But the first... Well, the second one ends up being Abel. Yeah. But Satan only determines the ones which he has control of, and to the degree that the Father allows it. He's got control of the whole human race. So how does Lucifer not Lucifer? How does Satan not have control over the line of Seth, for example? Abel. How did he not wipe <laughs> because out Because of uh, Weiss VH's intervention. All this stuff is taking place in the spiritual realm. What I'm trying to bring out is YHVH mm. being the manufacturer <coughs> of humanity. Mm -hmm. He controls the situation. He brings the spirit and clads it with flesh, if you wish. And as and when <coughs> Satan desires, I guess, he adds his tear spirit into a human being. Well, what happened was Adam was a prototype. Okay. He came into being through a non-natural, supernatural experience on the part of YHVH. YHVH took a spirit from the spiritual realm 
and adapted it to the physical realm. Doing that, he set in motion a system mm -hmm. which other spirits could enter into okay. once you had a man and a woman okay. that enabled other spirits to have access to the human race. When man fell, <clears throat> his life came under the dominion of the Luciferians. Okay. So spiritual access into the human race now, by reason of the fall, fell under the Luciferian, okay. not right. the white, white VHs yeah, gotcha. okay. per, per view. Yes. So how did Abel get brought forth if this mechanism is in for, is it, is it every other one Satan gets a chance at? No, there are things that are taking place in the spiritual realm. We have to take a look at the background. Elohim is controlling everything. That's the point. Yes, okay. If Elohim wants one, ultimately, the scripture tells us Adam lived 130 years mm. and begot a son in his own image. Mm. The image was what God made man into. Let us create man in our own image. Okay. Satan had dominion for 130 years until... Elohim supernaturally determined now right. an Adamic spirit is going to come through because this phase of my plan is going to start. Then you, because what Elohim is interested in is the line leading to his son. Lucifer is trying to corrupt the line. So you have this conflict going on. Lucifer dominates the human race because he's corrupted it. But Elohim supernaturally intervenes okay. when he sovereignly chooses right. to. Does Satan, during that period of time you've just described, um, know that Jesus Christ will come from that line? Sure. He must have some, some sure. level of foresight in that. Sure. Line. If people <coughs> could tell, and they could tell uh, a, a person, <coughs> a son who had the image, Certainly, the Luciferians could. Then he would know the Prototokos are going to come from that line. Sure. Okay. But the Prototokos was going to come for thousands of years. Sure, but he would still know that they're coming through that line. Sure. All right. That's why he kept trying to corrupt it. He knew what line it was going to come through. Okay. But let's go on. <coughs> <coughs> so we're looking at Esau as a, as a case in point of the tear influence on the human race. Scripture teaches <clears throat> the ten spirits bring only affliction to the Adamic race. Genesis 25 verse 24 to 25. <clears throat> One of days to be delivered were fulfilled. Behold, there were twins in her womb. So what we find here, <coughs> she wasn't certain about what the outcome was going to be. That's why she goes to this, to see what the Lord has to say about it. And he says, there's two in your womb. Nine months later, or whatever the period of time later is, she delivers two. <clears throat> and from that point on, they have to deal with a tear. Verse 25, And the first one came out red all over like a hairy garment. They called his name Esau. <clears throat> and after that came out his brother, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was threescore years old when she bare them. He's sixty years old when uh, <clears throat> his sons were born. Does Isaac and uh, Rebecca, do they understand the significance and the meaning of tears at this point? No. So they've got no, no idea no, what's going on. No, no, They just think these no. are two opposing twins. None of them had an understanding. Adam and Eve didn't understand what tears mm -hmm. were. Because when Cain was born, Eve said, I've gotten a man from the Lord. She right. thought it was the first right. Messiah okay. that was going to bring the human race back and restore it. Okay, so there wasn't a... Jonesy, you've taught us before, after the flood, you look upon the baby and you could tell the origin of the baby. Noah, mm -hmm. no. 
So it wasn't like that before the flood? All they could tell was whether it had the image of God. They couldn't tell a tear being from the Luciferians or not. Because <clears throat> the scripture tells us uh, <clears throat> Isaac loved both of his sons. He loved the tear more than he loved uh, Jacob. But that suggests that he doesn't know. He that doesn't. They don't have a clue. No, no, I'm talking about he doesn't know that um, Esau has, does not have the image of God. He doesn't look at it that way. He's looking at it as his son of his flesh. The spiritual comprehension <coughs> of the significance of the image is not registering to yeah. him. When's the first time we see that registering um, in the line of before the flood? Noah. Noah's the first one. He's yeah, able so to. We've gotten a gotten a child after who will justify the work of our hands. Okay. Question. Well, I wanted to point out to him. The thing is, Noah. He could tell after the flood that all of a sudden, oh. Uh, we don't have the image of God in his sons. Hmm. He immediately sure. could tell. Sure, but he can't but tell he, what a tear is. <laughs> but he doesn't try to uh, alter the situation because it's out of his hands. All they know, all but, they know, is this is a person that doesn't have the image. It's just like somebody who has a child that's precocious. Somebody, uh, the child is a genius. And Einstein, you can see the talents in the child as he's growing up. He's far superior to his brothers. And you're looking at that. You're not looking at the spiritual significance okay. of it. Should we therefore understand that Noah can tell because he's essentially a prophet and close to the Lord? That's yes, the only reason spirit, that he yeah. knows this. Yeah. Mm. So how does it affect the way he feels about his children? I mean, does he give so, them? Uh, does he work on them or try to? He looks at them from a human perspective. I see. Okay. That's it. This is far as it goes. Yeah. Mr. Jones, you pointed it out to me before, so I'm going to bring it up again. So now, mm -hmm. Noah, we just got through destroying the whole everything except for eight people, and Noah says, well, now, but we're, we're right, we're starting right back up. Mm -hmm. We're going to have another flood? I mean, you know, what, what's going through Noah's mind? Well, Noah can see the, the, the conditions leading to it. He doesn't have a total comprehension mm -hmm. of why that what they're spawning is another race of tares. Okay. He just sees the condition that's taking place. And because he can't comprehend it, that's why he gets drunk. That's why he makes a vineyard. If a poor man is, you know, he's not willing to go through this thing all, all over again. again. Okay. Go ahead. So, one more thing is I didn't realize that Jacob and Esau were twins. I had no idea. So I know that that's a special arrangement of, mm -hmm. of which I have no idea what changes are made as a result of that. But being twins, they sent, they're sent they sharing the same DNA type of thing. From my perspective, I'm just speaking out what I understand about what twins are. But I had no idea they were twins. So that you would think there would be a spiritual difference between, well, we actually do know, one is going to serve the other, and one's going to be a nasty yes. old SOB, and the other one's going to be a yes. God-fearing. And some twins, though, they're maternal, there's fraternal, fraternal and maternal. Right. Where fraternal, you, the other one doesn't look like the other one. Mm -hmm. So it could be... I, but twins usually have a bond between them. Yeah, on the, on, yeah, yeah, on the right, physical, right, on the physical right. level. Yeah. But if one's a tear, then, yeah, then I think all bets are off. That's a fraternal. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Fraternal yeah, they didn't look at all alike. Mm -hmm. One was red and the other was... Um, Hairy. <coughs> was he hairy red? He was hairy red, yeah. And the other was radically different because of the two distinct characteristics <coughs> they, br they bring out from the spiritual realm into the physical realm. But let's go on. Let's go. What we find <coughs> here, <coughs> drop down to verse 34. Same chapter, Genesis 25. Jacob <coughs> making soup. Esau, because he's firstborn, he automatically gets the birthright mm -hmm. that was passed from Abraham to Isaac, yep. down to Isaac's son. 
Verse 34, Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils, and he did eat and drank and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. Now this is a crux of something that we want to take a look at. Turn to Romans, ninth chapter. <clears throat> and then we're going to come back here. Romans 9, verse 13. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Ooh, this is not YHVH, this is Elohim. Mm. <gasps> the word hated, literally in this word context means despised, yes. Have I, meaning already, mm -hmm. somewhere in the past. Yes, in eternity what he's talking about note what it says verse 11 <clears throat> for the children being not yet born neither having done any good or evil that the purpose of God according to election might stand not of works but of him that calleth it was said unto her the elder shall serve the younger as it is written Jacob have I loved but Esau have I despised why because he trampled underfoot the blood of Christ. Mm. Now, we want to take a look at the promises here. Jacob, uh, Esau did something so detestable <clears throat> that he put even the other tares in the shade. <clears throat> Scripture indicates <clears throat> Esau brought upon himself the hatred of God for knowingly showing contempt for the person of Elohim and the work of Christ. Mm. Genesis 22, verses 16 to 18. promise <clears throat> after Abraham <clears throat> was willing to sacrifice his son that Elohim sends YHVH to send Elohim's blessings upon Abraham starting verse 15 the angel of the Lord called on Abraham out of heaven the second time that's YHVH <clears throat> and said by myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, that's Elohim. For because thou hast done this thing, thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son. Elohim is so pleased because Abraham has done something that the father himself is going to, to do. do. Okay. Be willing to sacrifice his son. It's the highest commendation I believe any human being ever got. So do you call Abraham a type? of father and the sure. type of Jesus he is Christ. called the father of the faithful right. but what I mean is a type as opposed to an anti-type yes okay yes <clears throat> then in blessing I will bless thee multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies that's uh, Ephraim and Manasseh <laughs> I just got to reading about the battle of Jutland <laughs> where Britain closed the door and Germany's expansion in <clears throat> World War I. <clears throat> and in thy seed, in thy seed, thy descendants, shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because thou hast obeyed my voice. I want you to focus on this. In thy seed, in other words, out of your descendants is going to come a blessing on every nation, every racial group, language group, cultural group of the earth. It's a promise of salvation to the Messiah. Okay. <clears throat> that is fulfilled. Turn to Revelation 
fifth chapter, verse 9. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book <coughs> and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Who is us? The elders. The four elders. That's for the tokens. <coughs> The promise to Abraham <coughs> was that out of his lineage would come one that would enable every nation and kindred to be blessed with eternal life. Basically it's referring to <coughs> those that had the eternal call, which are the elder group, and the rest of the human race that would avail itself of that opportunity as well. So when Abraham receives that promise, that's where the Protocols line is set in motion, physically. Yes. Mm. Enables the Protocols to come into the human race to qualify for <coughs> adoption. Mm -hmm. That promise was passed on from Abraham to Isaac to Esau. Abraham to Isaac to Esau. Esau. Oh, he's the first, yes, the first yes, one. Yes, of course. <clears throat> he understood. Why? Because the fathers gave the sons the totality of the understanding yes. of what the promises were. But he wouldn't have known all of that. Sure he would. Esau wouldn't have understood all that. Sure he would. Of course okay. he would. <clears throat> the, they, they are, did not, not only understand. Yeah, go ahead. Is that why God hated Esau? Was because he knew that he was going to prevent the truth from being told. <clears throat> he hated Esau because Esau didn't <clears throat> regard what God's master plan was. Esau knew enough. To understand that he was an integral part okay. in allowing these things to happen. Right. Turn to Hebrews 12th chapter. Excuse me, Hebrews 11th chapter. <coughs> Starting in verse 13. This is this is addressing your last question. Did they understand the promises? Yeah. <clears throat> These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them. The word seen there is comprehended, perceived, discerned. Having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. They understood the eternal significance of the promises, Esau included. Hmm. Understood them so much that they disregarded their life in the physical <clears throat> because they knew the promises were eternal. And if they held on to the promises, <coughs> they would be part partaking in this eternal glorious plan of <coughs> Halloween. Mm. Now, turn back to Genesis 25.
You're gonna see Esau's attitude. Genesis 25, starting verse 29. <coughs> and Jacob saw it pottage, and Esau came from the field, and he was faint, hungry. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. Jacob said, Sell me this day thy birthright. Now, if he had valued this, he would consider that an insult. Sure. <coughs> <coughs> and if he stood his ground, he could have gotten the soup for nothing. <laughs> <coughs> Verse 32, Esau said, Behold, I am at this point to die, and what profit shall this birthright do to me? So he's looking at what he understands is the promise of Elohim, eternal promise that the patriarchs also understood and lived their whole life holding on to at the expense of their progress in this life. He looks at this <coughs> and he says, man, man, I'm hungry, you know. Uh, <laughs> How old is this? How old is he at this point? A young man. Hard to say. He's probably your early twenties or thirties. Yeah, he, he's making a decision as as a youthful, unexperienced. You understand? Jacob's making the same decision. Jacob sees the value of what Esau has. Esau could care less about what he has. Elohim is looking at all of this. Notice what he says. Verse 20, 32, Esau said, Behold, I'm at the point to die, and what profit shall this birthright be to me? Jacob said, Swear to me this day. And he swore to him and said, his birth, Sold his birthright unto Jacob. Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils, and he did eat and drank and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. Okay. <clears throat> he sealed not only his fate, he sealed the fate of his whole line when he did that, which we'll, we'll cover in the, the next scripture uh, session. Uh, so a woman of God, even a woman of God could birth a terror baby? Sure. Because of the spiritual manipulations before sure. conception? Sure, sure. Okay. Uh, um, Isaac's wife was a woman of God. Yeah, that's why the Holy was, Spirit chose her sovereignly. Yeah. So she had <coughs> she had fraternal twins that one was of God and one was of terror. Yes. Okay, got it. Wow. Yes. The whole wow, human wow, race. Wow. Oh, the whole human race. We're just looking at... Oh, <laughs> thank you. We're just looking at... An, uh, one aspect that we're going to go into how these beings affect the whole human race from that point to today. <coughs> What's that word despised? <coughs> Hate. Um, detest. Jonesy, it, it sounds to me as if, okay, he's letting his belly talk him out of his birthright. <laughs> that, that's a rookie mistake to quote Chris, but the thing of it is, Mr. Jones, it's, that's not hating but that's not acknowledging as well. No. Yeah, he doesn't. No, 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 no. That's not. That's, that's not it. It's yeah. not his. I know. His wanting to take advantage of a situation that God is looking at. God is looking at how this man looks at this precious promise, which includes his son, which includes his master plan. This man understands a percentage mm. of that because it's been explained to him. Mm -hmm. We just read in Hebrews how the, everybody understood the promises. Mm -hmm. And they laid their life down because they considered the promise so precious mm -hmm. that they would hold on to it at all costs. God despised Esau because Esau understood and despised what God held holy. <clears throat> 
the attitude that Esau has, if you take something that God gives you that's precious, the blood of his son, and you trample that underfoot knowingly, yeah. God's going to despise anybody that does that. Mr. Jones, is it similar to the intellectual versus the spiritual? Yes. Okay. Yes. Tears are evil from the beginning. Do you want this? Uh, no, thank you. Because they're programmed by Lucifer to be anti everything that pertains to God. Sure. Lucifer is a prime example. 